Good morning. Welcome in Jesus' name. The bulletin cover really gives us our message for this special mission festival Sunday. We talk about darkness, but then the Lord brings us into his marvelous light. And we praise the Lord for being recipients of that grace, and then we carry forward in how the Lord would have us let that light shine. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, be present now. Our hearts in true devotion vow. Thy spirit send with grace divine, and let thy truth within us shine. Unseal our lips to sing thy praise, our souls to thee in worship raise. Make strong our faith, increase our light, that we may know thy name aright. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 505, or those gloomy hills of darkness. <laughs> Please follow the order of service as it is printed in our service bulletin. We worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, we are sinful by nature and have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and actions. But we are sorry for our transgressions and pray you of your bountiful mercy to be gracious and merciful unto us. Forgive us for Jesus' sake. Renew us by your Spirit and lead us in the way everlasting. Jesus Christ is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We are forgiven. 
given, with boldness and confidence we may approach the throne to find grace to help in time of need. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your kindness you caused the light of the gospel to shine among us. By the working of your Holy Spirit, help us to share the good news of your salvation, that all who hear it may rejoice in the gift of your unending love through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister to you. They shall ascend with acceptance on my altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these who fly like a cloud and like doves to their roosts? Surely the coastlands shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish will come first to bring your sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them, to the name of the Lord your God and to the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. Here ends our Old Testament lesson. Today for our mission festivals, we're adding a, a psalm reading. It's going, we're going to do this responsively. Again, we see the feature here of the good news of the gospel being proclaimed, being proclaimed by the lips of sinners like us because the joy of salvation that abounds within our hearts. But we also look forward to the day and the glorious day of Christ's return. We read responsibly from Psalm 96, selected verses. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Declare his glory among the nations. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. It shall not be moved. For he is coming. He shall judge the world with righteousness. And the people serve his truth. Our 
final reading for this morning is found recorded in, in Paul's letter to the Romans. And in this section, we are encouraged not only to believe in the Lord, but that which comes naturally for the child of God to confess his name before the world. We read from the Paul's epistle to the Romans, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 9th verse. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace who bring glad tidings of good things but they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah says Lord who has believed our report so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God here ends our lesson. We profess our Christian faith with the whole Christian church on earth. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with him, 508 Thou Whose Almighty Word.
Grace to you and peace from God the Father Almighty and from our Lord and our Savior from sin, Jesus Christ. I also bring greetings to you all from my family and also from your brothers and sisters in Christ at Berea Lutheran Church in Invergrove Heights, Minnesota. On this Mission Sunday, the text selected is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. We pray. O oh Lord, sanctify us through your truth. Your word is true. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, who have been called out of the darkness, into the marvelous light of the Lord Jesus Christ, your fellow redeemed. This last week at Berea, we had a church council meeting, and for the opening devotion, I used the words of our text before us today. And those seven grown men in our council meeting surprised me. I asked them if they ever thought about what it would be like to be blind. And they all looked at me dumbfounded and confused as though that was something they had never thought about before. What it would be like to lose their sight. I suppose that's normal for most people. Unless you have some sort of eye disease, like diabetic, diabetic retinopathy, or glaucoma, or macular degeneration. Maybe you don't think about what it would be like to be blind and to not have any sight at all. Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever thought of what life would be like without having the ability to see? What would you miss the most? Seeing the faces of friends and family, maybe a sunset, or the beautiful colors around you. Well, as our text begins, we're introduced to a man who never had the privilege of ever seeing anything. He was born blind. He never saw his parents' face, never saw a sunset, never saw colors, ever. And so this leads the disciples to ask a question. They ask their teacher, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? In those days, like today, there seems to be a sort of religious karma thought going on in the minds of the disciples. When you see bad things happen to people, you think, well, they must have done something bad. Likewise, when you see good things happen to people, you seem assume, well, they must have done something good. The disciples see this man without the ability to see. And they figure, well, he must have done something, or his parents did something, or God looked ahead in his life and saw some sin he would do, and because of that, cursed him with blindness from birth. Jesus teaches them, and he teaches us, that this condition was not because of a specific sin, but instead God had something more grand and glorious planned. Jesus says, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of, uh, works of God should be revealed in him. God's purpose in this man being born blind found right here, Jesus says, to put the works of God on full display. John chapter 9 is a great chapter. I encourage you to read through it later today. It's an easy read. It's very easy to follow. And as you read John 9, you will hear about the works of God on display or revealed through this man. First of all, the works of God are displayed or revealed in as Jesus heals him of his blindness. This is the account where he puts mud on the man's eye and tells him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And immediately he receives his sight. That's the work of God. But there's more works of God in John chapter 9. If you read on, 
about. The word evangelism simply means to proclaim good news. When we evangelize, we're proclaiming good news. We are revealing the works of God, that our salvation is the work of God himself, completed by his son, Jesus Christ. How important it is that we do just what this blind man did and reveal the works of God to others. See, all people are born in a much worse condition than the man in our text. As hard as life would be without having the blessing of physical sight, even more damaging is the spiritual blindness that we are all born with. Paul quotes from Isaiah and says, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. We heard in our epistle lesson from Romans 10, how shall they call on him of whom they've never heard? All people are born blind to the true way to heaven, like the Pharisees groping in the blindness of their sin. Man thinks that if we're good enough, maybe we can find our way to heaven. That's like this blind man groping in the darkness, hoping to find his way back home. Conceived in iniquity and brought forth in sin, all have fallen short of God's glory and are incapable of finding their way to heaven. But not you. You see things clearly. Just like this man born blind, the light of the world shined upon you. Jesus has come to you, and he has opened your eyes so that you see not only your sin, but you see so clearly that Jesus, whom you've never seen with your physical eyes, by faith you see that he is the only way to heaven. In Jesus you see the death of your sins as he dies on the cross. In Jesus you see life and hope he rises from the dead on Easter. This is the work of God to bring you to faith in Jesus as your Savior so that you see him clearly as your Savior from sin. What is it the hymn writer says? I was blind, but now I see. That sight which God gave you, to many of you, came about in your baptism. There Jesus washed those sinful scales off of your eyes and gave you your eyes of faith. For most of you, you don't even remember a time when you didn't know Jesus as your Savior. Praise God for that. For others, the work of God were revealed to you when someone shared the good news about Jesus to you. Someone took the time to talk to you about sin, about Jesus the way to heaven through him. And the Holy Spirit used the light of God's word to open your eyes so that you could see Jesus as your Savior. Those are the eyes of faith God gave you. Regardless of whether it was the word of God in baptism or the word of God that was shared with you, that faith is the work of God. But you know all these things already, or you wouldn't be here this morning. And yet, we need to remember what Jesus has called us to do with those works that we know so well. Jesus says, you are my witnesses. Like the man born blind, we simply testify of the things that we know, things that we have heard and seen. This man didn't have all the details about Jesus, but he knew Jesus was from God. He saw that clearly, and he testified to it. Jesus doesn't call on you to give a full dogmatics course on all the doctrines of Scripture. He simply says, you're my witnesses. Tell the things you've heard and seen. Preach the gospel. At Berea this last week, we started talking about plans for Christmas. And that may seem like a faraway thought, but... 
It's only two months out. And think about the Christmas angels and the Christmas shepherds. You could probably recite from memory the account of those angels. How they came bringing good tidings of great joy for all people. That was their witness. You know the shepherds made their way to Bethlehem to see the things which the Lord had made known to them. And then they made widely known the sayings which were told them about Jesus. That's it. They revealed the works of God that a Savior had been born who is Christ the Lord. God has given you sight. To see Jesus as the light of the world, the hope of your life and the hope of this world and the only way to heaven. Let us reveal that work to others. Next, let's consider when we should reveal the works of God to others. Jesus says in our text, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. At the time of our text, we believe it was likely fall in Palestine, maybe around this time of year. And by springtime of the next year, Jesus would be betrayed, crucified, buried. Jesus knows his time before his death is short. And so he says now is the time for him to continue his ministry and to reveal the works of God. I think as we think about the times we're living in right now, we can see the night coming. You only need to turn on the news or read the headlines on the internet, and you can sense that the night of this world is approaching. When we hear of people who are blind to things as simple as the existence of God, when people boast of sexual immorality, and are confused about something as simple as gender, we realize that this world cannot continue in this darkness forever. The return of Jesus on the last day draws closer and closer. We also sense the night coming when we consider the state of the Christian church in our nation. Pew Research routinely does polling among Christians and about, among various other groups. In the last 10 years, the percentage of Americans who describe themselves as Christians has declined by 12 points in America. Likewise, those with no religious affiliation at all, they refer to themselves as the nuns, has increased by 17% in America. And so we sense the night is coming when no one can work. Or maybe you feel the night coming in a more personal way. I mentioned to a couple of you how much my parents wanted to be here for the anniversary service last month. But because of their age, travel becomes harder. They can't do the things they used to do. And maybe that's the case for you as well. Or maybe as a congregation, you feel the night is coming when no one can work. But it isn't night yet. It's still the day. The trumpet hasn't sounded. Christ has not returned. We still have the word, so we still have the light. Right now, you have the opportunity to reveal the works of God by telling somebody else about Jesus. I want you to think for a moment of one person you know that as far as you can tell, if the trumpet were to sound Jesus were to return, he would say to that person, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Do you have somebody in mind? Maybe two people? Maybe three people? Of course, we don't know what's going on in their hearts, but as far as we can tell, Jesus is not a part of their life. They are spiritually blind to the works of God, stumbling around in the darkness. Have you revealed the works of God to that person? If not, why not? What are you waiting for? We 
just said we know the night is coming. We just said we know the day of Jesus' return is drawing closer with every passing hour. Jesus says, while it is day, we must work the works of God. And that's to tell other people about Jesus, the light of the world. Realizing that now is the day to reveal the works of God, you will be amazed at the opportunities God presents you with to tell other people about Jesus. Think of how our text started. It started with a man born blind. And that presented the disciples with a question. And that presented Jesus with the opportunity to reveal the works of God. If you listen to your, with your ears to the people around you, you will hear the same kind of openings to reveal the works of God to other people. You'll hear a co-worker talk about her mother who has terminal cancer. You'll hear a friend at coffee talk about their son who lost his job. You'll hear of a neighbor fearing the recession and what's going to happen to their retirement and what's going to happen to their home. Each one of those presents you with an opportunity to share the hope you have for a life in the world to come, for an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. You know the works of God. You know why Jesus came, and you know the hope that he brings you. As the hymn writer says, you can tell the love of Jesus. You can say he died for all. As they stumble around in the blindness of their unbelief, groping for answers, you have the opportunity to share the light of the world with them. Now, today, while it is still day, before night comes when no one So have you ever thought about what it would be like to be blind? I can remember being a grade schooler at St. Paul's down at the old church. And I think we must have been doing a lesson on Helen Keller. Because there were a number of us that decided we would wrap towels around our eyes and try to wander around the old school and see if we could find our way. It wasn't the best idea being on the second floor with your eyes blindfolded and coming down those steep steps at the old parsonage. But yet that gives you a feel of what it would be like to be blind and not see anything. A couple of nights ago I asked my kids the same question. What would you miss if you were blind? One said they would miss reading books. Another said they would miss seeing the faces of friends and family. As hard as that would be to live life physically blind, praise God that he has given you eyes of faith. See Jesus as your Savior from sin and your hope for heaven. Realize that those around you may well be stumbling in the darkness, blind to the things of God. And may God grant you the opportunity to see clearly openings he gives you to reveal his works to others while it is day. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
We are thankful also for the gift of faith by which we accept and make your redemptive work our own. Lord, it is your gracious will that none should perish. Therefore, give to each of us a love for souls that will cause us to seek out your lost sheep among the people we know and meet. Help us to tell them of the sacrifice your love made for their sins. Make us your devout and able messengers of the gospel by filling us with your Holy Spirit. Through the same Spirit, cause the words of salvation which we offer to others to be accepted into their hearts by faith, that they too may know the joy and gladness that fills our souls. May we never become disheartened in our efforts to speak the gospel to others, nor be ashamed to declare and defend your name. Help us recognize and seize every opportunity to testify of the only way to salvation, which is through your cross. Destroy the power of every evil force which works against the gospel, and remove every hindrance to the swift movement of salvation's message in the world. Help us see our personal responsibility to support the gospel work done by our missionaries wherever they labor. Give us generous hearts to pour out abundantly of our earthly means for their support, and remind us to pray diligently for your blessing on their message. We must confess that our fearful and timid natures have often made us reluctant to speak the wonders of your salvation to others. How prone we are to make excuses for remaining silent. Talents which you have given us have often remained untested and unused in the work of your kingdom. Our earthly treasures have largely remained uninvested in our church's mission endeavors. Forgive these sins of neglect, and through the Spirit, supply whatever courage and zeal, whatever love and abilities we still lack to make us faithful and effectual workers in your kingdom. To the praise of your name, we ask all these things, dear Jesus. Amen. And we join in praying in Jesus' name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The offering of thankful hearts will now be received. We, Lord, would lay at thy behest the costliest offerings on thy shrine. But when we give and give our best, we give thee only what is thine. O Father, whence all blessings come, O Son, dispenser of God's store, O Spirit, bear our offerings home. Lord, make them thine forevermore. Amen. We continue our service by singing selected verses of hymn 498, Rise Thou Light of Gentile Nations. <clears throat>
This week, Ladies Aid meets at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday, and Jean is scheduled to serve as hostess. And next Sunday, worship at 9.30. Um, note that next Sunday, we will also be having a potluck because it's our quarterly voters meeting Sunday. So we will have a quarterly voters meeting beginning at 12.30. Um, outside the main door, there's a basket with some rutabagas in it, and there's a couple pumpkins, and there's a couple squash. You know, if, if some of that stuff disappears, it would be replenished, you know, with others. So um, if you would like to take something with you as you leave today, please have at it. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Pastor Pfeiffer. Thank you.